So I've been sorting that. Sorting that and keep thinking about Mrs. Bramley in the internet. I'm like, oh, what is she doing in there? That, that image keeps coming to my mind so strongly. Yeah. Well, what do you know? Mm, what do I know? Oh, it's quite exciting. Um, it's like she's in there as a subversion um, and like an antidote to all of the not so pleasant uses of our communication and our information at the moment. And she is in there to uh, balance the score, so to speak, and um, to even the tables so that those connections that actually do need to be made um, get made and um, helping us to make those connections um, to speak or to just even become aware of the people and that are needing to make those connections. And it's somehow linked in. It's just, it's, it's like the, the layers and the layers and the layers and the layers and the layers of all the little grids that are forming and you, have been linking up those grids, like linking, you know, you link the dog, the trees to the dog grid. And then you're talking about linking the cat to the oak grid. And it's all like these little grids that are now forming and then linking together so that all the knowledge that's in the world is not in these little isolated pockets so that it all can start to actually intermingle. Yeah. I, I had another interesting experience with that over the past week. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting how things work in ways that I can't explain. Uh, since I've been out of a real job in the old reality, suddenly uh, there's a pickup in, in having dog clients. I sometimes work as an animal communicator and had been flat for years. And now it's picking up. And there was this little dachshunds requiring some uh, some assistance. And I felt like I couldn't reach her. Like, the phone is ringing and no one's answering. <laughs> that, that kind of a connection. And I was wondering, like, hmm, what is, the, what is it? And what else is, how else can I reach the, this doggy? And it doesn't have to be me. And this doggy requires some assistance and how can I get her the, the assistance that's required? And then a memory popped in of a dog that I knew years ago. And quite frankly, didn't think about this doggy much after. Mm -hmm. And it popped into my awareness. And so I, I linked the two. Like, uh, hey, Bianca, this is Nick. And hey, Nick, this is Bianca. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And all of a sudden there was this surge of energy. Yes. Like the other dog knew exactly what this doggy needed in in assistance. And I could step back and just watch the energy. There was a back and forth flow and now it's quiet. Yeah. Yeah, it's like the so after, after this, I, I get to have a phone call with uh, the humans that are connected to this doggy. Yeah. And I'm curious to find out how she's doing now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's so exciting because that's exactly what I've been having an understanding about, about these connections between individuals of all species and then the interspecies communication and the interspecies it's like once those grids connect with each other, our ability to connect into all the wisdom that's always just been there and just embody it is um, awesome. Uh, the words, the words, the only words that I've got is, is it's mind blowing. Like it's, 
It's beautiful. But boy, I had to laugh about my, <laughs> my apple dream. Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> it's just, and I woke can up. This, can you tell it again for the recording? Yeah. Okay. So I, it started, it's, I'll go to the, I, I, I gave, I gave myself an umbilical hernia um, where, cause I had a really bad cough when I was like eight and a half months pregnant with Luca. And that is not, I wouldn't recommend that. That's not much fun. So I tore my abdominal wall just at my belly button and I'd healed that and that was fine. Well, I should say I'd mostly healed it because usually you, it had rectified until I carried 30 straw bales from one end of my garden to the other the other day. <laughs> And I rather aggravated that. Now, I was thinking that that was kind of interesting that I'd aggravated this wound in my, in my solar plexus. It's like, given how the whole world is feeling that suddenly I've got a very tender solar plexus was pretty funny or not funny, but, <laughs> and so I took myself to bed I think it would have been four days ago now. And I had a really tender tummy and I just wanted to, I was getting really frustrated with not having enough isolation. Like I was just like, I wanted to go into this full inward turn and just be totally within myself. And I wasn't getting that space. So I was like, Oh, I just need to go right within. So I went to bed quite early and I've got my hand on my, on my solar plexus because it was sore. And I've just gone right within into this sort of inner meditative dream state that lasted the whole night. So that was night one. I'm trying to think what happened that night. I think it was just the going deeply within and creating a space just to be fully in my body and fully with me. Um, and the next night I felt the urge to do the same thing. And I woke up in the morning really aware of this high level of love that was being emitted from my physical cells my physical cells, like I've seen love emit from my spiritual body before, but not like not from my physical cells. And it was such a beautiful sensation. It was only coming out about a foot and my children, I was squashed. <laughs> I was really squashed in the bed because I had two kids on that side, my husband on that side, and I had about like this much space. And then the children started fighting there and my husband yelled at them across me and him getting cross just like suddenly the lights just switched off. And I'm like, well, oh, that's so interesting. Is it like, why is this such high vibration of love? So sensitive, like it shouldn't be so sensitive. Like it shouldn't just switch off because someone spoke harshly. I really should be a bit more resilient in this. So then I was pondering that because that's often been my, like I will reject, really reject any harshness because it switches off that light that is love that I experience. And I'm like, dude, you've got to get over that. That's just like, if you can't emit light, if there's any harshness, well then that's not much point because that light has to get into the places that are going to be harsh. You know, it's got to get into places that, going to require some work. So I was pondering on that. And then yesterday morning I woke up and I, I was in that waking dream state for quite some time. And I was really aware of a being there helping me to hold open a portal and this portal was like toroidal in shape and it was allowing this 
really high frequency love to come down into my physical body. And in my dream, I'm like, oh yeah, it's, it's, it's Apple, mm, whatever. Uh, and as I, and it, may, it was, abs and it's like, you can't move that Apple, that Apple has to stay there because it's holding open this, this portal. And I'm like, of course. And as I woke up, I'm like, oh, it's the being, it's the Apple tree. I'm like, no, it wasn't an Apple tree. It was an Apple. And then I'm like, well, that's pretty random. You've got an, <laughs> you've got an Apple giving you <laughs> this this portal. And it wasn't until I was doing a live last night that I realized, of course, it was the apple because the apple is the perfect representation of that toroidal shape in nature. It is the shape of the toroidal portal. And I was like, oh, I was almost mind blown. I'm sure everyone thought I was completely mad that. <laughs> um, but it was so exciting. I was just like, oh my goodness. Of course it was. Of course it, you couldn't get a better guide to hold open a toroidal portal on yeah. planet earth. <laughs> so I was like, oh wow. Okay. And then this morning I woke up and I'm like, oh, the healing's done. And I'm like, oh. and I'm like, oh, now my cells emit this, high frequency light just as a way of being. So that was pretty exciting. I'm like, oh, yay for stuff. <laughs> and you yeah. beam light visibly. Thank you. It, um, and I could admit it whilst my husband got cranky because he's been pretty tetchy of late it's like the whole fear stuff has affected his emotional state so he's more he's not much fun to be around really when he's stressed so <laughs> he's working a lot um which is good but means he doesn't have much downtime and i don't have much downtime so but even through the tetchiness i continued to emit light <laughs> It was like, yay! It wasn't, it wasn't um, this feeble, like weak, like oh, don't use a harsh word or I won't be able to shine my light. <laughs> um, and on the other hand, you would suspect that exactly that light is what overcomes or overrules the harshness. Yeah. <clears throat> And I suspect, because Apple came to me at the very start of this whole coronavirus business, um, along with a few other plants, but I suspect that light um, has a, a great deal of influence on how our bodies are affected by said virus. Um, I've been consuming a lot more apples lately. Yay. No. Yay. Uh, I've been having breakfast or apple pie for breakfast for almost two weeks in a row. Now. <laughs> you, 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 you took my apple pie diet. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Yay. Yeah, maybe there are some components in apples that help us be boost our immune system or especially flu-like viruses well there have been studies there's a there's a study that shows the antiviral nature of fresh apple juice so fresh apple juice is highly antiviral um and the, this virus is quite susceptible to vitamin C and it's also, I just read, I haven't felt into this at all. I just was reading something quite interesting a couple of hours ago about it binds to the same receptor sites that melatonin recept binds to. So if you are, have good reserves of melatonin, very unlikely to get a severe case of, of this virus. So, feeling at peace and at ease and joyful is 
basically the best thing that you can do to produce lots of melatonin. Yeah. Um, and apple pie helps. And apple pie certainly helps. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So could you write something about that, what you just told me? Yeah, I would love to. I've... Um, tried to find some time today it wasn't the right time to write that but i would really love to and um i'd love to do some research because as i was cooking dinner tonight i started thinking about apple showing that and then i started thinking about the role of the apple in the garden of eden and the, i'm like i don't know that i haven't i don't know the mythology well enough to explore that, but I went, oh, oh, I think there must be some connection there. Yeah. Um, so that. Well, I'm, I'm not so uh, knowledgeable about biblical texts, but I don't remember any bananas or pineapple mentioned in, in the Bible. No, no, I believe the only, the only, like, edible plant. Oh, I don't know. I don't actually know. Well, apple is the only one in my memory, let's say yes, that. that. Yes, let's say that. That's the only one in mine, too. <laughs> um, yeah. Again, the interconnectedness. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm going to have to get that and read that and find, find the link because Apple is definitely showing me a link between that and this energy coming into our physical bodies. Um, that is really pertinent and it makes so much sense now why I was felt like because it was so almost disturbing when I was when this whole shutdown came in and I was sort of imposed in this like spiritual lockdown it was like my guides went yes and you are now on your own and you will now go right into your physical body and you will not leave your physical body and you will inhabit your feet and I'm like okay that's not really my most comfortable place of being because usually I'll just like pop out of my body for any reason, just go and get that bit of information from here or there or feel into that energy or ask that being for what its insight is. And I really felt like it was this time is like so much a time for learning about our own self-sufficiency, our own resources, what we have actually within us. I mean, it's all fine and well and good and wonderful to go to these other beings, but what that actually does is it's keeping on handing our power over or going, we actually have no knowledge within us. Which is not true. No, no. So it's like I was in this self-imposed and it still is like self-imposed quarantine within my body until I figure out that I have access to that infinite wisdom within me and within my cells and that I can hold that high vibrational spiritual light within my physical body. And um, that's made me work, walk on the earth in a very, very different way. Yeah. So that's all unfolding, but it's pretty exciting. It is, yeah. Yeah. I think the, the looking inward is, is a global theme right now. Yeah. And not just the perception of being confined into our own home, house or home. And how lucky are we to have a home to be confined, confined in. Yeah. And it's not just the, the building. It's also the going inside in who am I really? Yeah. And even though uh, 
on the outside, we are wearing face masks in the medical sense. But in all other aspects of life, I think now is the time to take off the masks. Yeah. And they will fall off. Anyway. Yeah. I keep seeing these posts of everyone posting their regrowth going, oh no, look at my regrowth because I can't go to the hairdresser. I'm thinking, I knew that, I, I did know that that, but I'm like, oh, maybe it's time just for like, I mean, how much hair dye do we wash down the drain? Like every day because all these women think, oh my God, no one will love me if I've got a bit of gray hair. Yeah, and also, and also that is on the outside. The makeup, I was laughing at myself. I, I powdered my nose because I get very shiny. <laughs> and you wouldn't be able to see me. <laughs> yeah, I did put some lipstick on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's okay. And how much of ourselves do we keep inside? Yeah. And how much do we lock out others to see who we truly are yeah. hiding behind hair and makeup and fashion and putting and keeping up with the joneses and yeah and well i i've been pulling out of that for years now and besides working as a truck driver in agricultural <laughs> transport <laughs> Makeup no, doesn't, doesn't suit that well. <laughs> no. It wouldn't work anyway. And yes, for me also, even without makeup and roots, well, I'm the lucky one. I get to go out in the sunshine. I'll, I'll just simply turn blonde again. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> how lucky am I? And what's really important? How can we be so... thoughtful about outgrowing roots and and is this lipstick matching with my shirt and all that distraction from yeah. what else could be yes yeah and what, what is the level of self-esteem has to do with all that and is that even true yeah so here behind the sternum Who's there? What's there? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, I hope we get to meet more and more and more of the people that are actually there. Yeah, yes, please. Yeah. And that we get to meet ourselves more and more and more as to actually who we are. Yeah, the light in ourselves. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, for me, I would like to see the outside reality change into, and not, not to have the hairdressers out of jobs. Oh, no, going to the hairdresser is awesome. If, yes. that, if, if, you, if it's not like that you need to do it because otherwise something terrible is going to happen if you could like going to the hairdressers can be amazingly joyful for some people i'm yes, sure and and it is and i do f feel prettier when my hair is okay and i found a, a, a blouse that suits me and yeah all that oh. and how come it's that important in society and in general Mm. <sighs> and is it a giant distraction of what could be? Mm. Well, it's, I think it's like if we make ourselves up on the surface to be a particular way, we can fool ourselves that everything feels okay inside. And I think it's time to stop fooling ourselves. Yeah. It's like we can see, we should be able to see all the inconsistencies in our thinking now. It's like 
those inconsistencies should be being held up to be fairly obvious in a lot of places. And I want to say that there's so much support. I feel like there's more support now on so many levels to, to do the work. Although for people feeling really, really, really isolated and on their own and stuck, are they going to feel that support? So it's about asking, isn't it? It's about asking for, I mean, if the apple is coming to give that much support, I mean, there's got to, it's like, <laughs> if, if the food that we can eat on a daily basis is helping us to awaken on such large levels, the support is around us yes. everywhere we turn. If the cat, if my cat is pissing on my floor <laughs> to alert me to the fact that trees are wanting to grow into my bathroom, <laughs> and Apple is coming to, to shine light into my cells, we use that as a nice little metaphor to go, yes, there is support all around yeah. us. Yeah, if we are willing to look at it. Yeah, yeah, but sometimes it's hard, isn't it? It's like, how long did I go, no, I'm not listening. Cat, you evil cat. <laughs> la, 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 it's too hard. Yeah. Yeah. And it's interesting for those who are willing and able to use this quieter time to look at those things. Yeah. But for me as well, where have I not been willing to listen? Yeah. And what should I be doing? What could I have been doing? What am I avoiding still? And also I get for some aspects of that, now is not the time. And other aspects are long overdue. Yeah. 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 And I do distract myself. I have yeah. Candy Crush as well. I don't have Netflix, Netflix but I do have those games <sighs> that do not really a contribution. It feels like there's, there's a time at the moment for actually allowing ourselves to be really gentle with ourselves and to allow ourselves that distraction a little bit because it's like the, the intensity of the emotion and the, te the intensity of the, the alarm bells that can go off in one aspect of our being, they, it, like, it needs something as soporific as Candy Crush just to calm that all down. Or I watched Jane the Virgin on Netflix, which if you, it's, just, it's just the most ridiculous can't believe I was watching it. I never watch TV at night, but for the last couple of weeks, I have been many times during the week. Just because of the, um, it's like that, the buzz of the collective, even though I'm like fully in my body, it's like the buzz of the collective is so close that if I, like, Usually my creative space is a, is a, my boundaries become very fuzzy in order to be able to absorb the influence to bring it and put it down into something. And it's not that, it's not really a very nice time for your borders to become fuzzy at the moment. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. Or you have to pick a very thin bandwidth. <laughs> um, actually, it's not that. It's just a thin bandwidth that you have to be very conscious to screen out. <laughs> but sometimes it's not nice to have to be so... Mm. Aware. Yeah, or direct, like consciously directive. Like it, it's um, what 
What is it? So acknowledging that that old self and those old patterns are still they're still active and they're still active within our bodies they're still active within our minds so allowing yourself to have that time where you are sedating that is almost it's almost like saying a goodbye in it right it's like an easy goodbye rather than some sort of harsh Because no, I don't, there's not very many people. There's a few rare people on the earth that have no 3D aspects to them. And you can't actually deny the fact that you still have a 3D aspect because otherwise you would be denying part of yourself. And your body. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's really important in this transition phase to, to honour both. And to allow that awakening to happen in a way that's not creating conflict within you and that is not actually compartmentalizing and just pretending that part of you doesn't exist. Yeah. It is, a, it is about acknowledging everything that is. Yeah. And then choose. Yeah. Mm. I'm looking, I look around as if there would be guides there to tell, give me some insight in that, but, <laughs> but no. It's your turn. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I, it's interesting. I feel like I'm um, convalescing. That's how I feel. That's how I'm treating myself, like being really gentle with myself as if I was recovering from an illness or something. I just want to sit on the couch and cut, like cozy up and be really gentle with myself. Yeah. You have my permission. <sighs> Thanks. <laughs> I did build a whole new big garden and I have been doing lots of stuff in the garden during the day I've been I've been needing that little bit of just I want to say soggy time <laughs> it's just like the um yes that's right I don't need to share that but I'm sure there's many people with children that are because the, the kids kids are doing really really well although they go through waves of anxiety and waves of stuff confusion or just a bit of processing. So they're really clingy. They just want to sit on me all the time or hugs all the time and wake up during the night when I come into my bed. So like the level of personal space is like small, but I am ever so grateful for their presence as well. So more than ever. So yeah. But taking that, that little bit of, it's like by the time it gets to the end of the night that I'd usually be creative, I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to sit on the couch for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So, um, have you got some suggestions for people with how they might be able to... I know that lots of people, I'll start again, and that there's lots of people I can feel, I can see, and I, I, that are so interested about these grids. It's like they've heard about the grids or they've got a, an inner knowing on some level about the grids, yet they're still trying to think about them with their mental mind or understand them on a very 3D level. So from your experience, what's the best way for people to feel into a beginning understanding of the grids and how they might start to engage with them? Uh, 
well to get a mental picture of what a grid could, could look like, the easiest way would be look at our electricity grids, look at our road maps, which are grids, and look at Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a doggy Facebook, and there's a horsey Facebook, and there's a tree Facebook. Yeah. All these species have their own ways of communication, and they are interlinked. Yeah. Like we are on Facebook. Like I'm in the Netherlands, you're in Australia. Yeah. And on Facebook there are car lovers, there are tree lovers, there are crochet lovers. And they find each other in a mutual space. Yeah. And in the same grid like Facebook, someone who likes to crochet maybe also likes to cook. So they're connected to another group, the food lovers or the cooking lovers. And there's all this interweaving. And there's not many trees that don't get birds visitors. And in the Western world, there's not much trees that don't at least get to see doggies. And there's not much horses left on the world that don't get to see human beings. So they're all different groups. They're in and interconnected. And that's how I see it. Yeah. And when I want to try to have a communication with whatever, my question is, what frequency could that be? So if it's a radio dial, what frequency? See, do I have to direct my to tap into that specific frequency? What's their Facebook group? And then for me, it started off like a fantasy, just pure imagination. And I was doubting my own imagination. Like I put out a question and an answer came in or a re response came in. And then I put it aside like, nah, that's imagination. That can't, that can't be. And I'm lucky, I'm Dutch. And in the Netherlands, we, we learn many languages. So one day I had this, for me at the time, huge aha moment. What if response is coming in and it's just my thinking mind that dismisses the response? So my questions, my dreams, my internal conversation is in my native language. So what if there is a true response from an animal? Would it be possible that a response would come in in a different language, in a language that is not my native thinking, dreaming language? And I cannot deny it, they do. Horses speak English, uh, the Bramley tree speaks English, she's in the UK. Uh, but I, I do get responses in German, I do get responses in Dutch, my native language is Greece. Um, I do get responses in languages I don't understand. When I asked anything but Fries, so that's what I get. <laughs> And it could be light language, it could be uh, pictures or, or videos or drawings. But responses come in anything but my native language. Yeah, fantastic. And that was the proof my mind needed in the beginning. And we're, this is 25, 20 years ago now. Yeah. But my mind needed proof. And I get proof. Yep. Yeah. And there was so much proof that I stopped doubting. Looking for the proof to be proven, like, like many responses would be findable in a Google search. So I spent many hours researching the inf information I get yeah. from outside. Yeah, sounds very familiar. I... And the proof is in the internet. 
Yeah. So I, I at one point I will let's just leave it in trust and 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 trust that the information is true. And now my my days are quieter. <laughs> <laughs> Do not have to do all the research anymore. I have a very large library that I don't consult very often anymore that I used to. Um, yes. yeah. Go to, to back up or confirm those intuitive hits, let's just say. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Um, your question is how can someone who starts out with this or is how out? How do you start? Be curious. Yeah. And trust the information. And you can go do research. And if you're lucky and you, we know, we, we all speak different languages. We all speak words. We all speak sensations in our bodies. We all have some kind of vision or coloring or vivid imagination. And be curious, trust what you get, and keep going. Yeah. Doubt. Beautiful. And I think that's that we all speak different languages. I think I just want to pick up on that because I, I hear a lot of people or saying, oh, I don't get it like this, or I have to see, or people have often get these very prescribed thoughts in their heads about how the information is going to come through. Well, it's not. And and I think that your different languages thing is a really nice analogy because if you were only expecting the information to come through in one language, you would have missed all of that other stuff. So it's really about looking at all of our senses and yeah. going, well, you know, you might not ever see anything, but you might taste the answers to everything or you might smell the answers or there's a lot or feel them in different parts of your body or see them in ways that you don't think is seeing or hear them with different parts of your consciousness. Well, I don't see anything with these cameras, but as soon as I shut it and I close my eyes, there are all these yeah. things I cannot explain, but they are there. Yeah. And even if it's something blue with orange that goes, <laughs> I can still say hi. Yeah. Not knowing what it is, not knowing where it is, not even understanding the message, but it's here. I can say good morning. Yes. And yeah. again, where is information? Well, some information is indeed in the library. Other information comes through the radio. Or it could be a, a billboard outside. So look at how you personally pick up your information in daily life, yeah. which is the easiest way for you to pick up information. You yeah. go from there. Yeah, beautiful. Um, the, I want to do it like you. Oh, you're, I'm not you, so I can't do it your way. No. I have to find out how it is for me. Yeah. It just takes curiosity and play and practice. Yeah. And patience. And, and play. Right. Yeah. yeah. The play. The play is so important, isn't it? It's... And what <sighs> helped for me was keeping a journal. I write things down. Because no matter how much you think, you'll never forget. You will. How beautiful That's is it to go back through old diaries and go, wow, that was really cool. How did I forget that? And also to discover for me uh, the patterns in how it works. Yeah. Like I'm 52 now and all of my adult life, I wake up with a song in my brain. And for 40 years, I didn't notice. And then there was a time, you know, yeah, that's there. And then there was this bright moment like what if there's more to that let me just write it down for a while yeah and because mostly it's just a part of a song only one sentence or two words mm -hmm. and i started writing it down and looking at it like what is this and what's going on in all the other aspects of my life 
and it's always relevant. And I'm not sure if that is something that a guide would give me information or that my antenna is in that frequency or I can't tell you, but it's always relevant to something that's going on in my life. I didn't know 40 years before that it is what it is. <laughs> I've been, been trying to tell you for 40 years. <laughs> Please. <laughs> yeah. And like, then you're like, damn, I can't get this song out of my head. Can you please help me? Damn, can you shush? <laughs> well. What is the song playing in your head? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Mana, mana. Do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't tend to get songs so much, but little phrases, just little phrases that will just repeat. Yeah. It's just like. Until I acknowledge. Mm. Yeah. Until I write it down. Yeah. And instead of asking, can you shut up, please? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Another question could be, like, what am I listening to? What am I not acknowledging that I'm hearing? Yeah. What is the text? Yeah. And then usually, I I I also did that. Shut up, please. Or this is getting boring. Can I have another song, please? <laughs> Doesn't work. No. Not for yes, you me. can. Once you've acknowledged that and moved on. Yeah. 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 And it's details. Like some people like to call me an animal whisperer. And it's not me who does the whispering. I need to listen to whispers. Yeah. And it's got it getting a lot easier now with less outside noise. Yeah. yeah. Mila was sitting in the chicken house the other day. She's like, what do they call it? Oh, yes, a whisperer. I'm a chicken whisperer. <laughs> She's like, the chickens talk to me all the time and I understand everything they're saying. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know where she came up with that with the term because I'm not maybe she's heard of the horse whisperer I'm not sure I haven't I'm not aware of it but I thought it was pretty funny I had a bit of a chuckle I would love to hear or read some of the translations that Myla's making oh yes well she was very keen a little while ago to um to make her own course. She wanted to do a course for people. So I'll have to get her on. We'll, we'll have her on one day to, she'd like to switch into her sage mode and, and bring through some wisdom for people. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's um, just watching her and list, just listening to the amazing the amazing bits of wisdom that have become such commonplace and everyday occurrences for us. It's, um, it's a very beautiful thing. And, um, I'm most sure that she's not the only child bringing through all of this incredible stuff, but yeah, it's, um, it's pretty special. And I feel like I, I shouldn't be like hogging it all. I need to share it. Yes, and maybe not share it now, but at least record it in some way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. Maybe that's, maybe that's enough to give people a little taste of our chattering and our... <laughs> I think so, yes. Our, our divergent conversations. <laughs> Well, we um, pretty much kind of stayed on topic this time. We did, didn't we? I know. 
and and to time. <laughs> <laughs> um, but okay. it's been so lovely to chat with you as always, and I look forward to to doing it again and. Yeah, maybe some people will like to join us and chat too. And we can muse and wax lyrical about all sorts of things that that pique our interest throughout the yeah. week. Anything is possible in this space. Yeah, yeah. It's been lots and lots of fun. And um, I'm glad someone understands my apple. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's likewise. Like, <laughs> it's like, oh, Eliza. Such a freedom to have people in my life now to speak freely about those weird things. And I really hope people enjoy this. And I really hope people uh, feel encouraged to come out of their closets, so to speak. Yeah. And may it be a comfort knowing that we are not the only idiots. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Yay. That's so beautiful. Um, so, yeah, we'll just extend a welcome for people to come and join us and chat and play and explore the magic that we have all around us to play with every day. Cool. And I personally would love to hear some experiences or read about them. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. I look forward to that as well. Yeah. So I'm going to give a kiss to you, my dear, and to anyone who might be listening out there. And, um, yeah, we'll chat very soon. Okay. Yes, we will. Thank you very much. Love you. Love you too.